What's going on? This is Cody, and I'm interrupting that song because you know what? We got something bigger. We got something better, and it is a special edition of all the latest news to keep you in the groove with Maya. Maya, we got a special guest on the phone. Who is on the phone today? Chris Spencer. Chris, are you there? I am here. Excellent. We are so excited to have you. Maya, take it away, girl. Do you have any new projects coming out? Always, Maya. <laughs> always. Uh, always have projects in my back pocket. I'm actually writing for the BET Awards. Uh, it's being hosted by Jamie Foxx. Uh, coming up Sunday, I believe the 24th, maybe. And then I'm also helping Tiffany Haddish out with the MTV Awards, which is coming out the 18th or 19th? 18th of June. So... Chris always has got something going on. I'm out <laughs> pitching a few TV shows. Uh, I, I, I did a remake of House Party that I'm waiting for the world to, uh, for the studio to give me my money so the people uh, <laughs> in the world can see it. <laughs> and uh, I'm constantly on stage doing stand up, uh, getting ready to do a comedy. I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm, there needs to be four of me because that's how busy I am. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so you're an actor, writer, producer, comedian, and director. Are you equally passionate about all of these, or is there one that you like more than the other? I'm going to have to say stand-up comedy I love the most, because in that instant, I get to be an actor, a writer, a producer, and director at the exact same time. And you're your own boss. I'm my own boss. That's a good, a good way to look light, at it. Until they turn on the light and tell me to get off stage. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, that's never happened to you. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, how did you get your start in Hollywood? Um, did you uh, always but- know you wanted to be a comedian? No, I didn't. Actually, I was at UCLA where I went to school. Kids, get your education first. And a friend of mine was talking to a group of people. And he said that they asked him, what did he want to do after college? He goes, well, while during college, I want to be a stand-up comedian. And everybody went crazy. Oh, my God, I love stand-up comedians. Stand-up comedians are the greatest. And then they said, what about you? And after hearing how much they liked him, I was like, I want to be a stand-up comedian too. (laughs) But I, but I originally had no intention. <laughs> That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. That's funny, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think it worked out okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very, very much. Yeah. Um, so how do you prepare for your stand-up shows, and how do you write your material? So a lot of it, the best comedians... The stuff that comes out of your real life is usually the best stuff. Like, your favorite comedians are probably people who talk about themselves. So I'm married with two kids, and all of the drama that comes with that usually becomes great comedy. So my comedy comes from my family. I talk a lot about my family. I have a daughter who's very athletic but kind of mouthy. I have a (laughs) son who's very smart and kind of mouthy. I have a wife who's very beautiful and kind of mouthy. So it all comes from these mouthy people. And I guess you can tell I'm kind of mouthy, too. <laughs> well, I was going to ask, but I mean, I'll let you say it. Yes. Um, yeah, so um, you're a sought-after sought writer in Hollywood. What's your uh-huh. selection process and which projects you do? Oh, whoever pays the most. <laughs> <laughs> that is good advice. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Well, no, you know what? It can't be something that's disrespectful to women or another culture. But usually it's something that's, you know, that catches my eye that's funny and definitely financially has to make sense because they, these people are asking for a lot of your time. So you got to make sure, hey, are you going to pay me the proper amount for my time? 
And so that's usually what I base it on, those couple of things. It's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah so uh, you guest starred on the show Blackish. Um, is, yeah. that, is that how you made the connection and decided to become an executive producer on the spinoff show Grownish? Actually, no. Um, there were two separate things. I was there as an actor, and later on, I was, you know, looking for work as a writer, executive producer. I got something for you. And he brought me on, and I had a great time working with you. On that show. That's great. Yeah. 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 Um, so you're also a director. Um, what's the difference between being in front of the camera and behind the camera? Well, the, the difference is, the obvious difference is, if I'm behind the camera, the world doesn't get to see my pretty face. <laughs> uh, as a director, I'm kind of, as an actor, I'm, a hi- I'm hired to produce and uh, to act out whatever is being written. Um, as a director, I, I, you get kind of more, you get to, you kind of get to be a boss. Like everybody, at least in television, everybody um, has to, well, even in film, even more so in film, but everybody goes to the director for advice and information. So there's a thing where sometimes it's direct. But then again, it depends on what level of star. You know what I mean? Like if it's the rock or, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, somebody is huge like Melissa McCarthy, then maybe you're, you, you're, you are a bigger hat than the director. So it's just there's all level, different levels to it. But I like wearing big hats. That's, that's basically what I'm trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> so you I'm would say you have a... i and I like to be able to tell. <laughs> I'm listening, I'm sorry. Oh, I was going to say, so what you're telling us mm-hmm. is that you have a big head? Absolutely. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> kidding, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. You do a good job of wearing many hats and big hats as well. So uh, yeah, my head is so big, I can, I can wear three hats sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you've collaborated with so many people: the Wayne, Wayne's brothers, Kevin Hart, Nick Cannon, Jamie Fox. Is there somebody that you hope to collaborate with in the future? Um, uh, anybody creative and willing to share their ideas and not be greedy, I would love to work with. Um, I would like to start maybe doing some collaborations with some non-comedians, maybe to work with some dramatic actors like a Meryl Streep or a Denzel Washington or a Sam Jack, because a lot of comedians, um, we all some dramatic situations and we know we know funny as well as serious so it'd be great. you're cutting out a little bit for us I'm sorry I mean I'd blame it on our movement but I think we're sitting still oh <laughs> it might be me I'm in, I'm in the Hollywood Hill oh yeah that so yeah I would like to work I would like to be able to collaborate with some dramatic people is what I was trying to say yeah, that would be that would be Sandra a good Bullock or or Sam Jackson or somebody of that magnitude, as opposed to only working with funny people. <laughs> um, so, do you have a favorite comedian? Uh, Brit comedians, no, a single one. Richard Pryor probably would be my all time. Richard Pryor would be probably my all time favorite. Like it. Yeah. Um, so is there someone that always makes you crack up that you just can't keep a straight face around? Probably my children <laughs> when I'm not angry at them. They make me laugh and they know their mother is funny. I'm funny. 
So they kind of know that they're funny. They know they have the funny gene. So, yeah, I'd have to go with my little rug rat. <laughs> um, so um, I interviewed your friend, friend Maz Jobrani, a few weeks ago. He's great. great. Um, yeah. Um, how did you two meet and start collaborating? So I used to do a comedy night in Hollywood, a place called The Laugh Factory, and it was called Chocolate Sundays. And we would let a lot of young comedians come up there and do spots who, where they otherwise wouldn't get spots around town. Miles wasn't one of them, but that's where we met. And we just kind of clicked. He was funny. He thought I was funny. And then later on, um, he and I did a podcast together way before all these podcasts got popular. He and I and another guy named Al Madrigal had a funny podcast called Minivan Men, which is about some dads who are now minivan men. Dads who thought they were <laughs> cool at one time, and now they're fathers and husbands and having to do with the responsibilities of being a husband and a dad. And, sever- and since that, even when that ended, we still remained friend- friends. Cool. Cool. Um, so, you helped um, Kevin Hart get his big break. Um, how did you discover him? I didn't help him get his big break. He was already fancy. Well, he was, he was, on the, he was coming up. And I was just a guy who was like, you know what? I think you're very talented. Uh, you should come work. Or he also came and worked Chocolate Sundays as well. And then later on, I wrote for him for the BET Awards, and we created a sketch called The Real Husbands of Hollywood that everyone seemed to enjoy. And the rest is history. Cool. Yeah. Um, so you've worked with Nick Cannon on Real Husbands of Hollywood and on his MTV show Wild and Out. Um, yeah. Are are you are you sick of him yet? <laughs> can't, can't can't stand him. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll send this right to him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's one of the. I've known him since he was 16 years old. So we've always had a fondness for each other. Cool. Yeah. He, no, Nick Cannon is great. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I I was yeah, I was working on these questions this morning and my mom was sitting right next to me and all of a sudden and I just started laughing. I was like, I should just ask him this question. <laughs> funny. <You're> funny. <laughs> um so um how do you come up with the ideas for episodes of Real Husbands of Hollywood? Well, we have a, uh, we have a collaborative team. It's, it's not just me. There's a whole writer's room with very, very talented guys that actually chip in every week and say, hey, you think that's funny? How about this? Or this happened to me? Or wouldn't <laughs> it be funny if this happened to Kevin? Or happened to Nellie? Or happened to Dwayne? And then we collaborate. Cool. That's good. Yeah. Um, so there's such great chemistry between the entire cast. Um, did you and the rest of the cast all know each other before the show? Absolutely. And that's why we worked so well. We were already friends. So it was easy to talk. It was easy to talk bad about each other because we already knew each other. <laughs> <laughs> um. Are you allowed to tell us when the new season of Real Husbands of Hollywood is coming out? There aren't going to be any more. <gasps> oh, you're breaking our heart. Yeah, everybody got busy. Maybe we'll do a movie. Ooh, no. In terms of a, a series, no more series. Oh. <laughs> Man, you're yep. breaking our heart. It's one of Maya's favorite shows. Oh, thank you, Maya. How old are you, Maya? 
15. Yeah. Okay, you can watch. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. We we definitely give out the uh, the check with parents before before watching, but with lots of stuff. Okay, but Maya's yeah. given us all the updates on your shows and everything you've been yeah. working on. So yeah, and, and okay. our mom watched it like when it first started airing, and then we just recently started watching it with our mom and we went through like the entire like all oh the seasons God. in like just a oh couple months God. so in just like a month <laughs> so wow <laughs> so <crazy>. yeah <laughs> okay. um so in um in the WWE the wrestlers they always have a song that plays when they make their grand entrance. If you could pick uh -huh. any song to announce your arrival, what song would you want to be playing? It's getting hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> I am getting so hot. Oh, yeah, that's a good song for sure. <laughs> Little Nelly. Yes. I like it. Indeed. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, is there a motto or quotation that you live by? Play your own game. Ooh, I like that. So meaning a lot, of time, a lot of times people want you to adjust and do stuff to make them feel happy, but sometimes you just got to play your own game. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. Um, you guys can borrow it. <laughs> Thanks. We'll give you credit. <laughs> yeah. But don't expect Good. any uh, compensation. <laughs> okay. uh, you, have, you have one year free. Okay, good. <laughs> um... So, my last question for you is, who do you consider to be a real-life superhero, and why? Uh, I'm going to have to go with my wife. Aww, uh, and why? She, she's just so strong. Sometimes strong to a fault, but um, I, I, I just hurt. Her tenacity, her her knowledge, her perseverance is just like a real superhero. Like, nothing really gets her down. She gets knocked down. She gets back up. And so, yeah, I would consider my wife a pretty, pretty much a pretty good superhero. Just because she's always, you know, when you deal with kids, you know what I mean? There's going to be a lot of drama, and she handles it pretty well without having to kill any kids. <laughs> that's awesome yeah yeah oh I have one more question <laughs> um yeah could you please tell everybody on the um uh the whole cast of the of real husbands of Hollywood that they can't get too busy that they have to <laughs> make another season. <laughs> All right. I'll, yep, I'll, they, they, yeah, I'll have a word with them. You'll do your, you'll do your best. There's no promises, but uh, you'll, you'll do what yeah. you can. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. You guys take care and thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling in. I love talking to you. I've been so excited. Thank you. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. And uh, yeah. we're so glad to get right. to share everything you said with everyone here at Children's Hospital Colorado. We appreciate it. Love it. Yes. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.